what is going on guys welcome back to southwest fishing so like i said a few videos ago i wanted to do a quick review on the 2021 tracker classic xl and i've taken it out now four times i think i now have like kind of a grasp on what it may need maybe a few mods or what i like about it that it already came with stuff like that but uh it is a tracker 2021 classic xl i just picked it up shoot last month taking it out four times taking it out on four separate bodies of water so kind of got the feel on different bodies of water and before i go ahead and start this video i just want to say thank you to every single one of you guys hopping on board to the southwest fishing fam you guys are the best subscribers on youtube and i greatly appreciate it and for those of you who are watching my videos but are not yet subscribed please hit the subscribe button i'd greatly appreciate it and uh shoot hit the like button bell notification and Let's get this video started. All right guys, so we're gonna start off with the trailer. I'm gonna go through the trailer and a couple things that I do really like about it because the, because the typical garage is about 20 to 22 feet. And with this specific garage, it's 20 feet exactly. So I'm kind of out of luck, SOL, if this does not work. But one thing that they added that helps people like me be able to store their stuff is if you have any sort of issue, you have a detachable front part of the hitch, you just undo the pin, pull this out, readjust, and you can adjust it wherever need be. You can push it all the way in so that then your trailer and the entire boat can sit. It's gonna be real close. You're gonna have about an inch in the front, inch in the back, but hey, it fits in the garage and that's all that we need. And then when you're ready to go, you just put it right back. You grab the piece, you run it through, get the pin, find the little slot, and you just pop it in, hook it up, and you're all set to go. And obviously with the trailer, you have your light cable. It already is connected. So you just hook that bad boy on there when you're not using the trailer. Just bend that down, put the little pin through this little slot, and you got the other attachments, just hook those right onto the hitch. They also obviously give you the hand crank. I don't know what the specific tool is called, but obviously it's very handy. You can push the boat wherever need be, and this boat's very light. It's only about a 1,700 pound rig. So with three wheels on it, you can push this thing around by yourself. You don't have to be a strong person, and uh, you can push it wherever need be and use it with ease. It's super easy to use. And the awesome thing is the trailer is very well made. It's a really sturdy hand welded trailer. So you know it's gonna last for quite a while. Another nice thing with the trailer is with the wheel well, they give you three simple steps, one here, one right up top and one on the back end so that no matter what height you are, you can hop right up into the boat, no problem. Coming over to the motor, they offer it in a 40 horse and also a 50 horse. Me personally, for my first bass boat ever, I didn't feel the need to have to go to the 50 horse. So I figured I'll just start off with the basic 40 horse, four stroke Mercury motor. They're really good, they're quiet because it's not a two stroke. And it's really, really good on gas because it's not a two stroke. The four stroke is really, really good on gas. The gas tank is right underneath here. So as you can see, the gas tank's right here. You hook this strap on, you tighten it up. I just put new gas in there, so that's why this is loose. I haven't tightened it yet, but it's super easy. You'll just pop down this little tab that's on the right side, push down on the cap and turn it. Make sure before you start that you have the air vent open. There's that. You also have the battery back in there and everything else that is needed. Over here, obviously, you got the steering wheel. It tells you the RPMs over here. You have the navigation light when you click up. You have the billage pump when you click up and the aerator when you click down. Everything is super simple. There's also a light on the side right over here. And all you do is just push it down, it clicks right in. I'll show you when I get in the boat. They also give you just a really simple Lorenz graph and they hook it up to the back end of the boat. So really basic graph, but as you can see, really easy to use. You just turn it on. So as you can see, 
It's a super simple graph, it's nothing fancy. Just tells you the depth, the water temp, and then obviously the voltage of the battery. It's gonna show you the basic contour of the bottom and any sort of bay fish. You'll see any sort of arcs if you see any sort of bass or anything like that. The crappies, if you're a crappie fisherman, they tend to look more like trees standing up because they stack on top of each other. So just a really simple graph that they just throw on the boat for you. Obviously they throw it into the entire loan of the boat, but I mean, it's a cool little graph, really simple to use. And you just turn it off just like that. Pop that cap back on. And they have that depth finder hooked up to the back of the boat right here. At least this is how they did it for me. They ran all the wiring right through the hole. And there is the transducer right there. The only thing that I don't like about it being right there is obviously when you're driving, it tells you the depth just fine, but it shows as if there's a lot of bait nearby and fish nearby because with the propellers kicking up, a bunch of water, all the bubbles and everything are showing up on the transducer. That is just one simple problem that is a little bit annoying, but I mean, I don't really use that graph. I use that more for depth and to just slow down and check out the bottom contour real fast. So it's not really that big of a deal. They also just toss on a basic Minn Kota 45 pound thrust motor, nothing fancy. One thing that I should have done is the guy offered me, he said, hey, do you want an 80 pound thrust, 65, 55? Do you want uh, Ultrax, motor guy, whatever you want. They offer that right as you're purchasing the boat and they add that into the loan. That's what I should have done because I thought, you know, here in Arizona, we have some crazy wind during the spring and early summer. I should have got the old Trex and just had it a part of the loan, but no. I figured a 45 pound thrust would be just fine. So it is a hassle. It's very cool that they just toss this on there for you. Obviously it's a part of the loan, but still it's a hassle. Especially when it's really windy days and you're trying to keep yourself over fish. And because this is an aluminum boat, you still move around a lot, even with that trolling motor and you're trying to guide yourself. One problem, and that is one thing I would recommend for people, either get a more powerful trolling motor, whether it's a 55, 65, 80, 109, whatever you want, just upgrade. Don't do what I did. Otherwise you're gonna be blown around the lake and you're gonna get not mad, but irritated. So you got your main seat right here and your co-passenger seat right here. They're actually really comfortable when you're riding through the water. I mean, they look a little bit cheap and everything, but they're really comfortable when you're hitting waves and it doesn't hurt your back or anything. So these are actually really good seats that they put in here. They give you obviously the back seat and they also give you the front seat. You can obviously upgrade if you like. Me personally, I never use a seat and I honestly just keep them in the vehicle at all times only because I like having more room on the boat, being able to lay my tackle everywhere and everything like that. So that's just me personally. If you like being more comfortable and sitting down, definitely put the seats in. And if you've never owned a bass boat before like me, it might be easier to practice with the trolling motor sitting down. That's what I did on the first trip. And then after that, I was like, okay, I need to get these seats out of here just because it's taking up too much room. Another cool thing that I like about the boat they only give you four rod holders, but it's really handy for the net, obviously. They're set up for seven foot two rods, but I mean, I still put my seven six in there. It just hangs back over here a little bit more. Not a big deal. It is what it is. Those are really handy because it kind of cleans everything up and you don't have a bunch of rods laying all over the boat. Just keeps things a little, little bit cleaner. This is gonna be the live well. I haven't put any fish in there yet. So there's a bunch of random crap, but you got the live well right there. And all you have to do is turn it on and it fills up the water. It's super simple to use and, and shoot, it's real easy to use. I can't wait to get a big end to put it in there for a few minutes so that I could show it off to the camera real fast. In time, that'll come. You also have more storage down here. I keep my rags down here. These are the rags I use to clean the boat right after I get out of the water. I keep the life vest down here. It's not really a giant storage or anything, but I mean, I just like to put simple stuff in there. First aid kit, you got the life vest, you got the cleaning products to clean your boat after you get off the water. Super simple. Then we come over to the back of the boat. This is where you keep all your tackle. It's a bit of a mess for me, but you just pop everything in there. And I mean, I don't have the most tackle in the world, trust me, like there's people that have way more tackle than I do, but this holds a lot of tackle. I mean, I felt like I had a lot of tackle because I'm a bank fisherman originally, so none of this really fit in my bag. But once I put it in here, I was like, wow, you don't have trash. So uh, 
Pretty simple, they do just give you a basic little paddle just in case a motor and your trolling motor goes out. It's nothing big, but hey, if you're stuck out there, as long as you're moving and you can get back to the dock, it is what it is. So that is pretty handy that they give you that. Now the cool thing about these seats, they fold down just like this. A little bit of extra storage, as you see, a little bit of beef jerky in there from the last trip. Underneath the driver's seat, they do put in the fire extinguisher right there. So that's gonna be underneath the driver's seat at all times, you're not gonna move that. Obviously you have the trim right here. Click up and it goes up, click down and it goes down. You'll hold down the red to push it into gear. Also hold it down to put it in reverse and then obviously the neutral is just dead stick in the middle. You have a nice little cup holder, so for your morning coffee or whatever you like to drink. The one thing that I really want to do with this boat is add an extra part of the deck because I don't see a need for this unnecessary space. And I want to create a deck that is still removable so that I can either pull it out if there's an emergency, I can just slide it out and grab the life vest out of here, whatever need be, but at the same time, I want to create an extension point from here and run it all the way across to right here so that if I have a co-angler with me, we could both fish up front, whether we're flipping jigs or just throwing at the shore with spinner baits early in the morning, you know, just whatever need be to also allow the co-angler to be able to catch a, a few more fish. And also you could bring an extra person really, really easily. You could have two people up front and one person in the back and you could fish three people real comfortably in this boat. That's one extra idea that I personally want to do with the boat. That's the main idea I'm going to do with the boat actually. This is obviously simple little light. You just click it down, turns on, click it turns off. There's not really a whole lot to the boat, guys. It's really, really simple, and that's why I like it. It's aluminum, so it's light, but it still flies on the water real nice. It, the bow stays down. It goes over waves relatively well because it's also a partial V-hole, so it's it's just an overall really good beginner boat. So if you guys are interested, I would recommend it. I mean, the total price for me walking out was like 16 and I, I mean, I'm comfortable saying that because, I mean, it's a little bass boat. But th the payments are affordable. The interest rates typically aren't that bad, as long as you have good credit. But uh, it was fun. It, it's a fun little boat, and I really enjoy it. I mean, I like being on it. Whenever I go out by myself, really easy to launch, really easy to put it back on the onto the trailer. It's not like a fiberglass boat, it's not heavy. So even if need be, if you, if you go onto the trailer a little bit wrong and you have to push it to shift it not a problem at all you can even pick up the front end i've had to do that before when i went fishing down at the salt we went fishing there and just had to kind of pick it up and it wasn't a big deal really really light so overall really good one last thing you got the little kill switch right there right next to uh your uh, throttle and everything. But that is gonna be the quick little review of the little 2021. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you guys out so that if you guys are looking for a simple little bass boat, you guys can possibly come and purchase this one. They uh, do sell a lot of the 40 horses. They're more popular than the 50 horses, so it does take eight to 12 weeks for the boat to come in. A little bit helpful that, that it takes a little bit while, because then you can prep everything. You can get a garage ready, you can go get a storage place. There's a lot of different things that you could do within that 12 weeks to prepare yourself to get the boat. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it gave you a little bit of an idea of the price range, what the boat's like, how it rides, what they give to you, what they offer to you to put on the boat, everything like that. I also got a really good cover for the boat, so I, I have that as well. That was a little bit pricey, but um, Hey, it's my first bass boat. I want to take care of it. I'm expecting to have it for a very, very long time. So I want to take care of it. But if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of fishing in this boat. We're going to be going all around Arizona, taking, taking this sucker to new places where I've never fished before, whether it's Patagonia, Lake Havasu, Alamo, Apache, Saguaro. I mean, I fish Saguaro, but we're going to be doing different types of fishing. I'm still going to be doing my typical 
bank fishing because I've been bank fishing since I was four years old. It, it is what it is. Like I'm never gonna stop that. That is that is one thing I will always always do. And that's why a lot of you guys have subscribed to my channel is because a lot of you guys are bank fishermen as well. So I want to always help the bank fishermen out to be able to catch fish, whether it's urban or whether it's out at a lake and you're walking the bank. So uh, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, and we'll see you guys next time on Southwoods Fishing.